Hello, my name is Barry O'Connor. I'm the Director of Inland Fisheries Ireland's Development Programme and I'd like to tell you about the funding that's available through Inland Fisheries Ireland's Habitats and Conservation Funding for 2024. In this presentation, I'll tell you about the funding that's available, the types of projects you can get funding for, best practice in identifying projects and delivering them, and how to apply for funding. Next year, funding will be made available from two funds administered by Inland Fisheries Ireland. These are the Salmon and Sea Trout Rehabilitation, Conservation and Protection Fund and the Midlands Fisheries Fund. Funding is available from the Salmon and Sea Trout Rehabilitation, Conservation and Protection Fund for projects that promote the recovery of salmon and sea trout stocks and habitats. The fund is generated from fishery rates, the sale of salmon and sea trout licenses and commercial fishing licenses. A total fund of 1 million euros is available. No match funding is required. So what type of projects can you apply for? Riparian zone improvement, spawning enhancement, in-stream structures, fish passage improvement, soft engineering riverbank protection works can be eligible as long as there is a clear fisheries need for them and they comply with best practice. This fund will not fund projects designed to protect fields or infrastructure. Removal control of aquatic species, feasibility studies, development plans, screening for appropriate assessment, and projects of strategic national importance. The Midlands Fisheries Fund is a sustainable funding mechanism through which angling clubs can access funding for habitat restoration projects and projects that are of benefit to anglers. Funds are generated from the sale of Midlands Fisheries permits. Applications are limited to two applications per organisation. Projects are limited in size to €15,000. Applicants can partner with IFI to propose and deliver projects. River habitat restoration is defined as the return of a degraded stream ecosystem to a close approximation of its remaining natural potential. River habitats become degraded as a result of natural events, but most are caused by human intervention, such as drainage, poor agricultural practices, and the construction of barriers to fish passage. Inland Fisheries Ireland has published guidance on river habitat restoration. This is River Restoration Works, science-based guidance centered on hydromorphological principles in an era of climate change. This is available to download from the IFI website. Simply Google River Restoration Works in an era of climate change and you'll find it. This guidance sets out the three phases of a good river habitat restoration project. These are one, Identify the problem and its causes. Two, design measures to address the problem and implement them. Three, monitor the outcomes of the project. The next couple of slides show examples of damaged river habitats and the measures adopted to restore them. The purpose of arterial drainage is to get the water away from the land as fast as possible. Drainage creates channels with uniform depth, uniform width, and very little riverside vegetation. In engineering terms, these channels are very efficient. In natural terms, they leave very little habitat for vegetation, invertebrates, or fish. Arterial drainage can also remove the source of gravel in rivers that salmonids use for spawning. The effects of arterial drainage can be countered by the installation of in-stream structures, such as deflectors, pools, and gravel shoals. Deflectors narrow the flow and speed up the velocity. Pools increase the depth and decrease the velocity. Natural channels vary in depth and velocity along their course. These structures seek to make drain channels more nature-like and more biodiverse. Care must be taken in the design of these structures to ensure that they are sustainable and require a minimum of maintenance going into the future. For example, deflectors will have to be designed so that they generate enough velocity to scour out the pool downstream so that it does not fill up with sediment. The introduction of gravel can provide spawning habitat for salmonids. Fencing allows riparian vegetation to grow and act as a buffer to pollutants entering the watercourse. These measures improve the biodiversity of the river habitat by promoting vegetation growth and creating habitat for invertebrates to live in. This in turn is good for salmonids like salmon and sea trout. Unlimited access by livestock can damage the habitat by trampling riverbanks and allowing sediment and nutrients to enter the water. 
The impacts of livestock accessing watercourses to drink can be countered by the installation of fencing and the provision of alternative sources of drinking water. Fences prevent livestock accessing the river and allows vegetation in the riparian zone to recover. Troughs and pumps provide water for livestock and keep them away from the river. Funding is not available for landowners in nitrates derogation or participants in agri-environmental schemes. Dams, weirs and culverts can act as barriers to fish passage and limit the habitat available for, for salmonids to spawn. Barrier projects are not for the faint-hearted. They require many, many reports and assessments and take a long time to action. The reports required for a barrier mitigation project could include a sniffer report, archaeological impact assessment, underwater archaeological assessment, architectural impact assessment, flood risk assessment, screening for appropriate assessment, natural impact statement and planning permission. You will also have to get the permission and support of the barrier owner in order to apply for funding. The Salmon and Sea Trout Rehabilitation, Conservation and Protection Fund will only spend €300,000 on barriers in each year. Depending on the size of the project, that could be only one barrier. Before you embark on a barrier mitigation scheme, check with your local IFI office to find out which are the high priority barriers on the rivers in your area. A good application for funding will address all of the elements on this slide. In the past number of years, our funds have been oversubscribed, which means that this is a competitive process and only the best applications will receive funding. To give your project the best chance of funding, ensure that your application identifies a problem, says why it is a problem, identifies how it will be addressed and how the risks will be managed and how the outcomes will be monitored. The IFI application process is an online process that uses a grant management portal called Smart Simple to collect and process information. Before you can start the process, you will need to register on the system. Once you've registered, the next step in applying for funding is to prepare an expression of interest. To do this, you will have to consult with your local IFI office. The expression of interest system is open all year round, but if you wish to apply for funding in 2024, the deadline for expression of interest completion is the 15th of December. Once you've completed the expression of interest, you can start preparing the full application for funding. The deadline for completing applications for funding is the 26th of January 2024. All going well, applicants will be notified of that their application is successful or not in May of 2024. Our website has useful resources to help you with your expression of interest and your full application for funding. At www.fisheriesireland.ie forward slash services forward slash funding, you will find the 2024 funding guide booklet and the Smart Simple user manual. They tell you all that you need for an application and how to use the online form. If you need further help with accessing Smart Simple, preparing your expression of interest or your full application for funding, you can reach us at funding at fisheriesireland.ie. Thank you for your attention and good luck with your application.